हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स नो सोर्ट्स एंड इट्स पिक्यूलियर प्रिस्क्रिप्शन लाइव सेशन सो आई एम गोइंग टू वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू गाइस एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रिस्क्राइबिंग दिस इज टिपिकली ए मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द केस whenever we have a cases and uh, and these cases having any trouble or any block so we have to know that uh, most of the time we what kind of prescription we can prescribe in this in this situation i already described lots of uh, reasons causes and what we can do in these situation so today we have a <clears throat> another prescribing method because we already uh, prescribe uh, describe the breath trauma prescription intrauterine retrospective and epidemic today's uh, discussion is on lesional prescribing what is lesional prescribing this is related to pathology when you guys have a advanced pathology and pathology give a few symptom lesional prescribing is used when vital organs is compromised by an illness any situation in which you guys face or you have a patient having a very very advanced pathology in this situation we prescribe lesional prescri- prescription for example a kidney in advanced lupus any cases in which the vital organs are compromised by illness that is because become a one sided pathological manifestation one sided no uh flourish symptoms few symptoms just pathological symptoms this imbalance develop serious tissue pathology which repress the symptoms totality of the case so in this situation having patient having a advanced pathology he already took lots of medicines allopathic ayurvedic even homeopathic but didn't get any relief or there is no changes in pathology or even sometimes patients go for a surgery and even after surgery the symptoms are remain same so this situation arise in an advanced miasmatic state or at the end stage of chronic diseases usually when the patient is weak and the vital force is unstable if we talk about homeopathic basic rules and basic rules is that if there is a advanced miasmatic state destructive there is a destructiveness advancement mixed miasmatic state or the vital force is already compromised because of the pathology or because of strong allopathic medicines these are the two reason when our vital force is totally compromised so at this time the symptoms of the local manifestation become a active layer and the focal point of the disease so patient takes 
few uh, investigation paper with him or her and he or she will show you that doctor this is my situation i have a few pain and you find that all symptoms are clinical or pathological in by nature and you didn't find any other symptoms any symptoms we can based our prescriptions nothing is there but just a few pathological symptoms usually when we prescribe we look the patient mental and emotional state to understand the ground which help to create the chief complaint mostly we we used to uh explore the mental and emotional level because we can we have to make the base of our prescription but in lesional prescribing the whole pyramid of symptom is turned down side we don't have emotional and mental state the patient is already in in mute situation he has only pathology or pathological symptom nothing is there there is no narrow well sense so in this situation we have to find the remedy we have to prescribe the remedy so all the symptoms including mental and emotional one and even the delusions are created by the pathological instant of helping to create it everything is connected to the pathology every single thing because if the patient is suffer from last stage and there is a disappear suicidal tendency will automatically come because the the patient is already suffer from a a major clinical condition for example if the patients having a few episode of blur vision some mild neuropathies and the patient is suffering from any any advanced pathological condition he may become depressed at the prospect of deteriorating the function and the loss of quality of life that depression is is unique no this is not unique because this is common it's common to pathology if, if anybody is suffering from this kind of situation and uh, the depression will be there because he wants to live his or her life peacefully but there is no peace there is no peace and the depression is followed by diagnosis doctor diagnose the case hey you have a cancer hey you have a kidney failure you have a abdominal cancer you have this or that disease when the person or any patient heard that news the depression will automatically come this is common in common and that common situation is connected with the diagnosis advanced pathology it didn't help to create it if we permanently reverse the symptom of that advanced pathology the depression will automatically go it means that depression is directly contacted with pathology or that diagnosis of the pathology or if someone has malignant cancer their emotional state may be come dominated by their fear that about their illness possible death and will care for family member if they pass away 
This is common. If the patient is diagnosed with malignant cancer, the fear will arise. Fear of death. What happened if I die? What happened? That person is dying. Who will take care of them? These situation produce fear and that fear is common to pathology and that fear is produced by pathology or diagnosis. In other words, the cancer may induce an arsenic state in someone who may not have needed arsenic at that time. That's why most of the time when the cancer condition is arise or but there is a different state is there. One person who consult you with a small lesion in his arm and that lesion is not cancerous in condition. But the patient says, doctor, I'm fear. I have a fear that it will be cancer one day. That is important. And that is the arsenical state. Arsenical state is always at peak. A small thing is look like a cancer. Small lesion, small boils is look like a cancer. I fear that it will be a cancer. I, I just want to treat as soon as possible. Carry desire to be fast and fear of cancer, fear of incurable disease. So this is the state of, this is the state of arsenic. But the patient has already in advanced pathology and fear of death that time produce is very common because he know that he know that he has a problem and that problem is very serious and I will be I will be die in few months few days few years like that but you cannot find this same situation in every person. Sometimes patient says, oh doctor, I don't care about this. I know I have a problem. I know I'm suffering from cancer, but I can't bother. I live my life. This is boldness. He's bold. He know the situation, but he don't care. He, he live his life in their own way. But we have to find out advanced pathology, few symptoms. He already took lots of medicines. So remedies, for example, if we talk about the bonding Hassan method, the remedies choose by one bonding Hessen formula become very valuable in lesional prescribing. But because we know the location, sensation, modalities, concomitants, if you are dealing with advanced pathological case, having few symptoms, always try bonding Hassan method. Because in bonding Hassan method, mostly we, we make that symptom generalize. We generalize the symptom. And when we generalize the symptom, we have a qualitative symptoms. We have a location. What is the location of the kin? Second, we have a sensation like different types of pain. We have a modality, aggravation, amelioration. We have a concomitant. Lots of, I have a pain here, 
but that pain is is shifted in my toes i feel the same pain from here to my toes and we have a particular time modality but that is very very important if you don't have any other symptoms if you don't have anything else you have you can make the symptom generalized and this this kind of uh, case taking help us to find the simile this is not a simlimum it is simile is very very close a remedy for that situation and if we are lucky we can if we will find some some mental symptoms or mental uniqueness of the patient then we can prescribe on the basis of that one too so if the location sensation and modality of one sided pathology must with the concomitant general symptoms a remedy acting directly on the pathology can be chosen without the risk of suppression and this in this situation you didn't suppress the symptoms but you will ease the condition of the patient you will easily ease and that that condition will not that prescription will not suppress the patient not suppress and if the remedy is successful in stimulating the process of healing in a severely compromised vital force there will be an in, improvement in the lesional as well as in general health but this type of case taking will help in advanced pathological cases but more lots of people are doing practice only on bonninghasan method and they are successful but there are lots of different methods are there because if we are standing on one point we have a 360 different angle it means we have a 360 types of different prescribing and we have a 360 types of different type of concept to just prescribe on for one patient it means we have to know the different type of prescribing the different types of case taking because we have a lots of options and how we can learn this options just reading the books different books especially the uh, original books and uh, you will find lots of methods the local lesion will gradually recede and leaving a clear symptom picture to choose the simlimum for the chronic condition because the patient will come to you after taking lots of remedies allopathic home remedies naturopathic homeopathic ayurveda lots of remedies but if the situation is as it is no changes it means they just suppress the condition and you have to find out the remedy which flourish which strengthen the vital force so that the vital force can produce more symptoms and if we have a more symptom we can prescribe the simlimum very close remedy to that patient so this is one of the secret of curing advanced pathological state if you are guys dealing with advanced pathological case 
and you you don't have any other options try this method and according to this method you will definitely help the patient often a remedy chosen according to the totality of the symptoms chronic condition is not the best starting point at the vital organs functions and eliminations are too compromised if you think that uh, you will try constitutional remedy most of the time it fails because the base is weak and sometimes what you think that these are very valuable symptoms according to the pathology they are very common in advanced pathology kal case depression is common fear is common fear of death is common because that fear of death is produced by advanced pathology he know that he has a disease that is incurable and he will be die very soon common and this symptom is produced in all patient if they are suffering from advanced pathology fear fear of death depression don't want to talk with anyone these are common symptom according to state of the patient but we in 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 f4 is a number 153 Dr. Hanuman says, if you are dealing with any type of case, you should try to find out rare characteristic symptoms according to the basic law of homeopathy. And basic law is that you have to know the exact causation, evident causation, evidence. You have an evident causation of the condition. like death of the son doctor i was healthy i don't have any single problem but after death of my son this condition arised evident evident cause and if you didn't find any evident cause try to go for next level and you should know what to do if you don't have one thing because we have lots of options and these options only only we know that after reading books or only after discussion second and next prescription is zigzag prescription this these type of zigzag prescriptions are typically a acute type of prescriptions for example in case of incurable diseases you know this condition is not curable like aids no medicine is there the homeopath need to prescribe on dominant clinical picture and he will change remedy more quickly and than usual so that the the vital force can produce few symptoms for example a treating that aids the practitioner might first address night sweat and for fear of death arsenic iodatum treat the thrust for borax brinia for pneumonia or if if you are dealing with terminal cancer third stage cancer practitioner might first help the breathe with carbovitch anxiety with arsenic palliate the bone deep bone pains depression with orm and this is basically acute prescribing except you never win the battle you know that you can't you can't 
reverse that pathology and to know what is curable and what is not curable the knowledge of practice of medicine is must to all homeopath because only this book only practice of medicine gave you a clue what is curable and what is not curable how our old master says this is curable and this is not curable because they are all ambibious md they are all master of pathology they know that what is curable and what is not not curable what is lacking in us is that is knowledge of pathology knowledge of physiology knowledge of anatomy we don't know because after examination after our college we didn't read nobody read these books and they just wants to prescribe on mental symptom on physical symptom on this or that a complete doctor should know pathology physiology what is common what is uncommon what is pathological what is physiological sometimes the patient suffering from any kind of situation but that is physiological and it will clear automatically you don't need to give any medicine but we know we should study these things so next rules of prescribing must listen this topic because this will help each and every homeopath in his clinic second thing which are very important last appearing symptoms last appearing symptom try to understand very peacefully and if you have experience leave that experience on one side and just listen that the last appearing symptom of that case if outstanding or definite may not lead us to the simlimum but often they unearth the case and show the way for the remedies आपके पेशेंट में आपके केस में जो लास्ट अपीरिंग सिम्टम है अभी आपने उसको मेडिसिन प्रिस्क्राइब नहीं की है यू स्टिल डिडेंट प्रिस्क्राइब द होमोपैथिक रेमेडी द लास्ट अपीरिंग सिम्टम इन द डिजीज will not guide you or lead you to the simlima by last appearing we mean that before homeopathic prescription but after homeopathic prescription the last appearing symptoms are important they are actually not a last appearing symptom but they are a old symptom which are come out after the simlimum this is two different type of situation pehla disease condition hai abhi aapne medicine prescribe nahi ki usne apni disease course ke bare mein aapko bataya aur aapne kaha ki ab is tarah ke symptom paida ho rahe hain magar ye symptom aapko help nahi karenge but after medicine jo last appearance symptoms hain wo old symptom hain jo medicine dene ke baad paida hue now the last appearance symptom after homeopathic treatment may actually be the old symptom which depressed year ago and now resurface 
through the action of remedy never change the remedy as long as your case following the hearing's law if these symptoms are produced after your medicine don't try to change the remedy don't change the remedy because these symptom will help you for second prescription if this is following the hearing's law don't pres prescribe any other remedy just wait and watch first rule disease last appearing symptom and after medicine appearing the last symptoms both are different situation must you guys must know this this two different types of symptoms because they help you to do wrong thing they help you to stop the wrong thing second is complementary remedies and what are complementary remedy you should you all know that a great time saving rule of hearing's law is that the second remedy is like a bear a complementary relations to the first one what is hearing's law according to the hearing's law that if you prescribe a belladonna and the bell, the patient is very is and the patient get ameliorated by belladonna it then his complementary should be calcarea and the remedy next remedy should be his complementary remedy the complementary remedies are listed in the repertory and in many materia medica in many materia medica the remedy last the last remedy that acted is one of the most important guide for the next remedy if the remedy is one remedy is giving relief to the patient the next prescription should be his complementary and keep in mind the remedy which is acting should continue to be prescribed in increasing potency successive alum potency until it stop acting many times when the patient get relief from one remedy and after some times the remedy didn't work the most of the times doctors change the remedy but the rule says don't change the remedy until you fully confident that the patient needs second remedy first try all the potencies if you are but the, these potencies always in rising potencies but if you are dealing with chronic cases dr hanuman says if you prescribe 30 in chronic cases don't prescribe first 200 or 1m come down 24 18 16 12 sixth potency then go above but if you are giving alum potency 0 by 1 cup method dilute dilute that remedy dilute that potency and by succussion prescribe that remedy until you sure that the patient need next level or the next remedy so patients every homeopath have the patient should have the patient and you know the basics of basic rules of homeopathy so 
The symptoms of the complementary remedy which appears in the patient under the action of first remedy, the complementary remedy is needed to complete the picture. For example, one person having a cold and chest infection very recurrently and the patient is, is giving, uh, getting relief from aconite, it means you should prescribe him sulfur after a time to complete the picture so that the recurrency will stop and the patient get relief from this recurrence. In other words, you do not have to follow the rules on blind faith. The complementary remedy will be indicated. Just focus on your case and you will definitely know that the complementary remedies will come after acute prescription. If the patients come to you uh, from the another homeopath and tells you that the last remedy that worked for her is was sepia and you should consider natremure, the complementary remedy of sepia. And if the natremure symptoms are present in the patient, if staphys gary act well and stop in spite of increasing potency, causticum or carcinogen will be indicated both complementary to the Staphyscaria. So one example, a young person act, reacted well with hyosemis and after getting the hyosemis, uh, the itch eruptions appear on the surface on his body. And most, what kind of next remedy you guys suggested for this patient. If the patient get reacted to hyosemis, you prescribe the hyosemis, the patients get eruptions, whole body itching, very severe itching. What is your next choice? What kind of medicine you will prescribe? If anyone can tell me the remedy, what, what is your mind? What remedy you will suggest for that patient to complete the case? And most of you guys thinking of sulfur. But sulfur is not complementary remedy of hyosamus. If he, the patient is reacted to the hyosamus, got the eruptions or itching stramonium and belladonna are the complementary remedy of hyosemans and according to the rule these remedy will be the next choice of Eighty to ninety percent chances are there. These remedies are will be there, but if after mental mental condition or any person who is very very uh, uh, or the patient is reacted to hyosemis and after getting hyosemis he got the eruptions. Don't try to change the remedy until you have a strong symptom to prescribe on second remedy. If we talk about complementary remedy, for example, aconite, spongia, and hippersulfs in croup and boninghausen, according to the boninghausen, these are the complementary remedy to each other. 
एलियम सिप्पा फास्फोरस सल्फर आर्निका बैलिस्पर एंड रूटा आर्निका रस्टोक्स कैलकेरिया आर्सेनिक थूजा टेरेंटूला ब्राइनिया सल्फर कैलकेरिया चिब्रकुलिनम कॉलोसिंथ स्टेफिसगेरिया कॉस्टिकम फेरम फॉस सल्फर ट्यूबरकुलिनम एग्नीशिया नेट्रम्यूर सिपिया सल्फर कालीबाई सल्फर ट्यूबरकुलिनम काली कार्ब सल्फर काली फोस ट्यूबरकुलिनम काली आयोडेटम लाइको सल्फर ट्यूबरकुलिनम लेक्सिस लाइको सल्फर ट्यूबरकुलिनम नाइट्रिक एसिड सेफलाइनम ट्यूबरकुलिनम सल्फर and if you think tuberculinum is the last remedy in every situation most of the situation the last remedy is tuberculinum and we always prescribe according to the miasmatic state miasmatic state the next type of prescribing is anti soric no sort and what is that most of the time when the symptom pictures is definitely pointed to the anti soric remedy and that anti soric remedy will give you no effect then we will go for anti soric no sorts and you will be surprised Sorinum is not a powerful antisoric nosode. In order to importance and usefulness, the old must recommend tuberculinum or bacillinum, then bowel nosodes, and the bowel nosodes are sorinum and or streptococcinum. These are anti soric no sorts so we discuss a few different type of prescribing in different type of cases we have lots of more information we will try to discuss these condition in next session and if you guys have any questions you can ask i will try my best to give the answer and we will continuously discuss this topic but on 23rd of december i'm going to arrange one session for everyone is vaccination and homeopathy that is very important in today's environment because we should know the how to deal with kind with with these situation with homeopathy so i will provide you a number just try to contact with them and that session will be one day session and i will describe each and every types of situation in which we can deal with homeopathic remedy and almost 26 remedy we will discuss in this session and the session is vaccination and homeopathy on 23rd of december so in between we will discuss our prescribing but that session is very very important for everyone just try to subscribe for that session so will we can learn lots of tools to deal with these severe 
एंड अनवॉन्टेड सिचुएशन बिकॉज आफ्टर वैक्सीनेशन लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स आर अपियर एंड विश वी कैन अवॉइड दीज सिचुएशन विद होम्योपैथी सो दैट्स ऑल फॉर टूडे and you guys have any question because i am i am just focusing on management before describing the remedies because management is more 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 important than just prescribing the remedy we should know the management of the case and when we complete the management we will go for remedy descriptions then there are lots of other information too according to the hanneman we will try to discuss that uh, topic too so that's all for today thank you